What's going on YouTube? It's your boy Shubik with another Mutilate Guide video for you guys today. A while back, I uploaded a PvP Mutilate spec video. And in this video, I wanted to update that because I've really been putting it to the test. And honest to God, Mutilate is way more in depth than I thought. Mutilate actually has an infinite amount of specs and it really just boils down and breaks down to your play style. And in this video, I wanted to deep dive into each talent point and what that talent point actually means means to you inside a game so you can just build your own mutilate spec that fits your play style and your comp the best because honest to god there isn't just a this is the best spec or this is the double dps and this is uh the healer dps it actually is really a personal preference on how you like to play and i think that's incredible so i just wanted a deep dive so you guys can really understand the specs and what they mean so you can make the best spec for yourself all right, so let's open it up and here we are. We're gonna start off in the assassination tree, okay? First, we're definitely gonna go five out of five malice. You might be able to play with going three points inside Eviscerate. Uh, you can use this when, for example, you have a Pally that is cleansing off or a Shaman that's cleansing off. And in that crutch moment, you're not able to get a End Venom off. You can do a Cold Blood Eviscerate and it'll still do around four to 5k damage. Another big moment where you can use this is when DKs use AMS or they use AMZ. They typically use this at, at, a, at lower health, right? So with this talent point, you are able to get the eviscerate off and get the bonus damage where you will be able to finish them or be able to consistently add pressure because the DKs are pretty much going to swipe off and just remove any sort of pressure from you in those windows. Another moment when this is really good is against dwarfs. Dwarf priests are very prominent on the ladder. They're actually going to be swiping off your poison and you're not able to reapply the poison. So again, this is another moment where you can do the cold blood eviscerate and you're able to actually finish off your target or still be able to build that tempo. All right. So again, five out of five miles for the base crit, which I think is great. This allows your auto attacks to crit and the higher crit chance you have with your auto attacks is more energy regained. Remember deeper down the tree, our auto attacks will give us two energy back. So the trade-off is 3% crit for those moments where the dwarfs are swiping off or the DKs, or maybe a crutch moment with a shaman or a pally is cleansing off and you're still wanting to get that finisher off, okay? Next up is Ruthlessness. Gives your melee finishing moves a 60% chance to add a combo point to your target. This is great for when you're trying to stack up pressure. Say, for example, in a healer DPS, healer DPS moment, uh, you want to do a slice and dice right you have like you go mutilate and then you have the combo points you want to slice and dice then you get an extra combo point then you mutilate and then you can rupture it's a way for you to build up the fluidity and be able to stack different debuffs on your target to build up more tempo i think ruthlessness is a great choice for whatever comp you're playing whether it is healer dps or it is double dps because you do feel it right even your envenoms is really great Something that happens with End Venom is if you don't get a crit and you only get the two combo points, right? With this, if you do an End Venom before and you get the one, you do a Mutilate for two. So now you're at three and then your second Mutilate is going to give you two, which will give you to five. So it's kind of also like a buffer where it allows you to get to the fifth combo point for a bigger End Venom, just in case if your crits don't do well. And it's really just always nice to have, especially in moments where you want to rupture and again, get the extra combo point for a slice and nice and build up that different tempo. So really, really good here. I personally run this as well. Next is puncturing wounds. Increase the critical strike chance of your backstab ability by 30% and the critical and the critical strike chance of your mutilate by 15. This is incredible. I think at this point in the talent tree, you want to, and you have to take this. This is a must have because of the, such an impact it has on the critical strike chance of your mutilates and again the mutilate crit will be able to gain you a seal fate proc which will be able to give you a combo point which will be down here next we have is vigor vigor is incredible it gives you 10 energy uh you run this instead of getting the glyphs so you do have that 110 energy and is absolutely incredible definitely definitely want to run this so next we have is blood splatter 
So this increases the damage done by 15% for your Rupture and Gyro. You actually probably could run this with more of a double DPS build. For example, if you're playing with a Feral Rogue, I think this could be very, very good. Or even Rogue Mage or even Lock Rogue, because there are a lot of times where we want to keep the player and we want to lock them down with Bleeds. And another highlight too, not to get too off track, we are going to be having Serrated Blades, which causes your Rupture to deal 30% more damage. So this is a pretty solid choice over the subtlety, not to get too two ahead but it can work in conjunction so now you're getting a 50 percent increase on your rupture damage so your ruptures actually can be something that can finish and i think when you play it with a feral your bleeds actually do even more damage this is a potential opportunity where you can use against rogues incredibly when you're going up against warriors if you're doing a healer dps versus a healer dps this is a great way for you to potentially have more uptime and have more pressure because again, with Mutilate, you are staying in a lot. The Ruthlessness that we just talked about, this is great for when you want to get a big Rupture off, right? And now your Ruptures are doing a lot of damage. And then you have Slice and Dice with the big Rupture and your Mutilates add in a little Envenomant. That's a lot of pressure out. So again, you can use this talent for sure. And it is really cool with, with the talent's Serrated Blades because you are going to get 50% increase on the Rupture. Second up is Expose Armor. It got nerfed. This is kind of a dead talent. If it actually increased the armor, I think there would be something there. Uh, however, it doesn't. So this is definitely uh, just a ghost talent and I wouldn't recommend this to ever be chosen. Next is Lethality, which increases the critical strike damage bonus of all combo generating abilities that do not require stealth by 18%. So this is, in this is going to directly increase and affect your mutilate damage. All right, this is going to make your mutilates more heavy. And that is, in my opinion, very valuable because mutilate can definitely be a big mover in the tempo of a video, in the tempo of a game. Even though our auto attacks and poisons are our highest damage outputs, mutilate and envenom, and particularly mutilate, is really what kind of threads the needle. So having lethality is very, very good. And you can, you can definitely run this maxed out and it's going to give your mutilates even more of a pressure build especially if you are running the 1.4 1.4 this will give your mutilates that extra damage when they crit that is really going to help and let it kind of surface and feel more so like 1.8 with the mutilates again you're running puncturing wound so you're going to have a 15 percent increase to get a 30 percent increase bonus on your crits so it's really really dope next we have is vile poisons Increases the damage dealt by your poisons and end of it by 20% and gives your damage over time poisons an additional 30% chance to dispel effect. This is 100% must have. The dispel is huge. It's very, very important that we have wound up, crip up, and deadly. And we want to keep it at five stacks in particular with deadly poison. So I think vile, same as vigor and same as puncturing wound is something that it is maxed out. No questions asked. You have to have this, especially with the end venom damage buff. It is super important that we want to get as high as numbers we can with our end venoms because that is our finisher. That is how we close it on warrior pallies. That is how we close it on paladins before bubble that is how we finish off with cold blood envenoms to really build up that tempo we're always using envenom to build that tempo so that extra 20 percent that we're getting is just massive like i said with mutilate threading the needle envenom as well threads that needle these are very core abilities that allow our class to have a lot of tempo and pressure and it's super important that we have that talent point next we have is improved poisons increases the chance to apply deadly poison to your target by 4% and the frequency of applying instant poison to your target by 40%. So each point you go, you go up by 4%. And this is where you can kind of juggle between do you want higher mutilates or do you want have do you want to have more often poisons being applied? So just to kind of give a little bit more of a talk on my thought process process on why I'm three and four. I'm doing three because I think the 18 is close enough to the 30. It's over halfway and it's still going to be giving me that damage bonus that I want without, you know, mutilate feeling a little bit too braille, uh, frail or fragile. And the improved poisons, I'm at 12, I'm at 16%. This allows me to make sure that I'm always having deadlies. Like if I'm going up against, sometimes you're going up against Ellie Shaman H pal and there's double cleansing. It's very important that I want to have those poisons up and for example, when we talked about earlier, you have the stone formed uh, priests 
anyone that's a dwarf anyone that can cleanse even paladins what happens if they get good rng druids what happens if they're getting good rng on you you're gonna feel like damn bro i can't even play my cast i can't get the end venom and that's why i always want to have the poisons up especially if things fall for example we're going for a reset a lot of the times i'm blinding rogue on cloak or something and we want or we're blinding on trinket and we want to go for a longer duration reset to get the drs off poisons are going to fall off so that means our kill window the poisons need to proc and the poisons need to be there so it's very important that you have this talent because a lot of times when you're killing it's going to be a kill on a reset go and i think it's very important if you're double dps to be able to stack the poisons up in the cheap shot kidney because there are times where even with this talent point you're going to get bad rng and you're not going to get a, a, a deadly poison proc till sometime in the kidney or maybe even late late cheap you know so having this just kind of secures and make sure that i'm going the spec that's going to give me the best rng possible and reduce the oh my god man why didn't i get a poison proc right and circling back to this is also really good with healer dps versus healer dps because of the uptime right when you're going up against a paladin he's constantly cleansing if you can outperform his cleansing he's just going to give up on it probably and that's going to be really good because that means you're going to constantly have tempo and you're going to constantly have the poisons that you want on your on your enemy on your target and then you're able to use the venom how you wish when you wish so that's super important because it really adds to the play style again the deadly poison it really makes the difference when it comes to the damage and having the poisons stack up quickly and fast and stay there is super super important so that's again a little deep dive on why i did go the three four you can toy around and find the sweet spot or maybe you say hey i never had a problem or i'm rocking the 1.4s I'm rocking the 1.4, 1.4 weapon speed. I'm going to go five out of five lethality because now I have the fast daggers. I'm going to have the faster off uh, attacks and I'm going to have more applications for the poison. So I'm just going to go big mute boys. So moving on, we have fleet footed reduces the duration of all movement and pairing effects by 30 and increases your movement speed by 15. This is not stack. This is amazing. Again, we don't have shadow step. So anything that allows us to be more agile, more mobile is very, very important and we take the 15% speed buff, so then we can get any enchant we want on our boots. I go for the big AP on the boots, so it gives us a little bit more attack power while also securing us a little bit more of that mobility, which is really, really nice. So this is great when you ever have like any sort of slow on you, you're going to be reduced, whether it's mages, whether it's DKs, whether it's hunters, you're actually going to be able to move a little bit faster because again, we kind of are crux by not having shadow step. So this is a way for us to feel a little bit more agile and mobile. Next we have is cold blood, which is a must have talent. This is a very important talent that allows us to pretty much have the pressure on demand to either finish a game or really kind of take control of the match and swing the momentum in our way. And I really, really highly recommend you go in cold blood and then next up because it's in the same vein we'll talk about seal fate your critical strikes from the abilities that add combo points have a 100 percent chance to add an additional combo point this is great because again going up back to puncturing wounds when you get the crit with lethality you're going to have larger crits so you have frequent larger crits you're going to get more combo points okay and again what's amazing is circling back to ruthlessness when you just get a rupture or a slice and dice off and you get the plus one now the mutilate is going to be doing three combo points which will allow you to get to your finishers even faster moving on to kidney shot this is a talent point that is very preferable on your specific play style and also particularly on the comp that you play for example when i play rogue lock i don't actually go improve kidney shot because I find that our damage is a little bit more front loaded. When I'm playing Rogue Mage, I'm actually going Improved Kidney Shot because our damage is usually the mage is getting a sheep off or something like that. Because in Rogue Lock, we use Succubus a lot of times. So he's already casting. We're getting the damage in the cheap shot because he's just using the Succubus, which he can do two things at once. But with the mage, he has to sheep a little bit more set up. So our damage is actually more so in the kidney shot. This is a great talent for threes as well. I think it's amazing for rogues to have the kidney shot because when you make the proper swap or the connect, you're going to have that full 6% or 9% increased damage and it increases the damage of gloves as well. So you can really add a lot of impact with having the improved kidney shot. And this is something that I really recommend you to test out to figure out if you like this talent or not. Again, when I'm playing rogue mage, I think it's great. Healer DPS, I think it would be very situational depending on 
you know, if it's a mirror match, I think it's great because every kidney that you get off, you're adding even more pressure to the other healer. And then against warriors, I think it's a little bit hearsay, there say, because again, you're pumping into plate. And I think the damage is going to be coming from the end venom. Uh, but if you can get a five comma point end venom off in the kidney, it's going to be doing even more damage, right? Maybe you're doing a kidney into a vanished garrow and then into like a mutilate and into an end venom. So there are moments where this can be really, really beneficial for healer DPS. I definitely think this is a threes, a threes talent and a double DPS talent. In particular, if you're playing like Feral Rogue, Rogue Mage, Double Rogue, uh, Rogue Ret, uh, Rogue Shadow Priest. These are the comps that you're probably gonna be running the improved kidney shot. Uh, and then in particular, Rogue Lock, I don't really find myself using it. Because again, I also wanna add in note when you are deciding to choose this talent, a lot of people are trinketing the first kidney shot. Kidney is an ability that a lot of people are recognize is kind of the, the finisher where you have to get out of it or you're going to die. So the first kidney is usually gonna be trinketed. So you need to figure out with your own play style, are the games ending on the first kidney or the games ending on the second kidney? And again, it is a really good talent if you are winning on the second kidney because then you're gonna have the 9% extra damage and that's gonna add for you mutilate your gloves and everything like that. Next, we have Quick Recovery. This is another, depending on what you're playing and personal preference. So Quick Recovery, all healing effects on you are increased by 10%. In addition, your finishing moves refund 40% of their energy costs when they fail. This is really good. Sometimes End Venom misses uh, and it's definitely a feels bad. So Quick Recovery on that definitely makes it feel really good and responsive. And the healing is really great. When I'm playing Rogue Mage, I don't go Quick Recovery, but when I'm playing Rogue Lock, I like to go Quick Recovery and Battle Masters. I get a 20% heal on my Battle Masters and I get a 20% heal increase on my Health Stone, which can crit. So I can go from 4,000 back up to 12,000 or even like 14,000, 15,000 in a second and pretty much have a second life because of this. Healer DPS, absolute must have, especially when you're stacking resilience with this, you really feel the heals and the enemy team is definitely gonna be feeling it as well because the heals are just gonna be even fatter on you. And this gear just works really, really well with the kind of low resil, low health kind of gear right now. So quick recovery is a, or a great, great talent to go if you're using or if you're playing a comp that does have the heals, space space for Resto Druid Rogue, HPAL Rogue, DPR, even SPR, Lock Rogue, anything that has that off heals, Boomy Rogue, it is really good to have this because it's gonna give you that, that second win type feeling, which will allow you to kind of stretch that match a little bit longer for maybe the second kidney, which you have the improved kidney shot and you can really land the kidney and finish it off and get it. So interesting talent, would definitely recommend you to play around with quick recovery, play around with kidney shot, toy around with the amount of numbers you have for improved poison and lethality, because these are all things that you can kind of tamper with and really kind of figure out what exactly fits your play style and composition. Moving on to next is murder increases all damage caused by 4%. I love this auto attacks, poisons, everything. It's just a really good buffer. Um, and again, depending on your comp, you can swap this out. Uh, this is just essentially a damage boost. But if you're feeling that your damage is already there, you have, you know, really good gear or, you know, the comp is maybe even healer DPS and you feel like you're kind of losing to more of a survivability, you can swap this out and put it in a quick recovery. You don't need murder. You can go more defensive. You can just take this out, go to quick recovery. And now you have the increased healing and you're able to take something else in the other tree. So again, Mutilate is really, really cool. You're able to take different pieces and kind of piece together your own puzzle of Mutilate. And that's why I absolutely love this spec. Next we have is Overkill. While stealth, for 20 seconds after breaking stealth, you regenerate 30% additional energy. I can't express this enough. You're gonna take it anyways, because you have to You have to, to grab Mutilate. But this is amazing for double DPS. To be able to chain, I want, I want the rogues in here, all right? I want all the rogues to pay attention. You can literally time your vanishes to maximize your overkill buff. I know sometimes you're gonna have to throw them vanish because it's more important for the actual play at hand, but for maybe a longer game or healer DPS, sometimes you can literally chain your vanishes to have 60 seconds of 30% increased additional energy regeneration on top of your out attacks with slice and ice with the 1.4s. Let me tell you, bro, it is correct. So overkill is a really, really cool ability. And there it is, the holy grail, the bread and butter. It is your boy mutilate. We're grabbing that. 
no questions asked and master poisoner because they removed the glyph of end venom for some weird reason i don't know why no changes i guess some changes master poisoner we're gonna grab the three out of three we're gonna go back up and talk about dead end nerves now dead end nerves is great for healer dps uh and also too if you like a little bit more survivability uh hashtag mirror hashtag marm these guys love 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 to have survivability and a lot of times they prioritize living more than of, of going because they want to play the game right and if any other mistakes happen, they want to be able to have that extra buffer to be able to get out. So this adds to around like 300 resilience if you max out the dead end nerves. This is a must have for healer DPS. And it's also viable for double DPS depending on the comp. For example, when I go up against Warrior Pally, a lot of the times the Warrior is going to be having some uptime on me. And it is a little scuffed when I just kind of get dropped in half. And it, might, it would be nice to have the dead end nerve to have that little bit more survivability. Or if I'm going up against Shadow Priest Mage or Lock Mage or anything that has a lot of passive damage um, that throughout the match, like you're kind of getting hit maybe from the AOEs on the ground or, or, mute, or just dots being double stacked. It is nice to have the dead end nerves to reduce that damage because it kind of just stretches out that game for you and it makes it feel that you're able to finish out the match or you're not like getting killed just a little too soon before like that moment where you can clutch it it's just super good to have and very beneficial even when you are playing double dps and again all of these right here are super optional and you can play with all of them in any which way that you want depending on your play style and what composition you are playing Next, we have Deadly Brew. This is a must-have. It adds the instant wound mind-numbing poison to the target. It adds the cripple. I have wound on my offhand, so I shift for MS, and it adds the cripple. So if they're trying to run away and I need to slow, or I need to shift a priest that's trying to fear my priest, it allows me to have that access to crippling poison on demand without losing the auto-attack timer swapping daggers back and forth. Next is Focus Attacks. 100% you have to have this because this allows your mutilates to get off more and this really really complements the 1.4 and just the whole like modern 2k22 mutilate rogue because that energy regeneration coming back so fast because we are min maxing the comps and the classes it's just so so nice next we have fine weakness this increases your offensive abilities by two percent per point this is similar to murder and again this is super optional um, I am playing a double DPS build right now with Lock Rogue, so I'm kind of going a more all-in approach where I am not taking Kitty, not taking re Quick Recovery. I want to have as much damage as I can from my autos, from my Mutilates, all my offensive abilities. I want them to have as much damage as possible in a short amount of time. Next up, we have the Combat Talent Tree. I want to highlight two things that are actually optional that you can take. You can take the dual wield specialization. This is great for double DPS and this is great for uh, healer DPS because this is going to increase the damage done by your offhand. And again, if you're doing 1.4s with slice and dice, this can add up to a lot of damage. A lot, a lot. This will also boost up your mutilate damage by quite a bit. So this is a nice talent to have if you want your mutilates to really have that upfront damage. Circling back to the lethality with the crit chance, you get the crit. Even bigger crit on the lethality. And with this, your offhands are going to even have more of a number impact on your target. Next, we have improved gouge. A lot, a lot of times you're going to be using gouge. And a lot of times, sometimes, and a lot of times they're going to be getting knocked out, depending on what your comp is. For example, if I'm playing Lock Rogue, gouge is actually really, really nice to have. And having that big, beefy gouge just to have that CC on demand to lock it in for a CC chain is big because Lock Rogue, it's actually very challenging to get the opener because we don't have invis like Rogue Mage. And again, if you're playing Feral, this is Feral Rogue, this is big. If you're playing SPR, this is massive. Resto Rogue, this is good. DPR, this is good. So toy around with how you like to use Gouge. If you're a rogue that is like, oh, I absolutely love the Gouge, I always look for it. You can use you can use combo points into Gouge. It is not a dead talent to use whatsoever. Is it harder to get the Gouge off sometimes? Yes, but for example, say you're going up against DK Pally and you're DPR or Lock Rogue or something that doesn't have a stealth. DK spamming in. You already know he's going to AOE you out because you're only going to go up against him on Dalaran Sewers. What are you going to do? He's just going to beeline to your healer. You gouge him full. Literally, it's pretty much a sap at that point. 
boom healer runs over we're running over to the pally it's a good time and then when it's off dr we get a full gouge again maybe the guy's popping his cds and he's going aggressive and he's like shit He's just, he's just gouged me on my full go. What am I going to do? Sit this? It's a full stun, essentially. It's a goddamn kidney shot. No, trinket, blind, boom, easy. So gouge is a very, very good talent to use. Do not think because we are mutilate that we cannot use this because it is super vital. It's super viable. It's not something only subtlety rogues can take. Next, we have the subtlety tree, and these are a lot of things that can kind of uh, change as well. So first off, ruthlessness, your finishing moves have a 20% chance per comma point to restore 25 energy. Mwah, chef's kiss, love it. It's really, really good, especially when you end venom, especially when you slice and dice, especially when you do rupture. All these things are going to have the chance to, to restore the energy. And honest to God, a lot of them do. A lot of them just restore the energy immediately. Next, we have Master of Deception. If you're playing Healer DPS, this is really, really good because the beginning of the game is a little bit more slower and the opener plays a big impact on how the match is going to roll out. So it is for double DPS. I would say it matters even more for double DPS, but that's why you want the Master of Deception because if the double DPS gets the opener, it's even worse for you guys. Next is Opportunity. Increases the damage dealt by your backstab, mutilates, garrots, and ambushes. So again, this is going to make your damage for your mutilates even larger which is amazing this is going to make the mutilates actually have an impact so you definitely want to take this definitely want to take this and moving on to the second tree and i'm gonna circle back to master of deception in a moment because this is where on my previous video the spec went way different like super super different so i made this new spec and i really really enjoy it so camouflage allows mutilate with the glyph to be incredibly fast with sprint it's so fast it's actually a hundred percent chance guarantee if you strafe it just properly to sap mages trinkets with the 15 percent increased stealth movement on top of the sprint glyph you are fast to always get the mage trinkets and mages are still in the habit of trinketing saps thinking that they're going to get you because they're thinking that you're going to be a sub rogue if you're a mutilate rogue and you have the sprint lift and you go full camouflage because sub you do not go full camo you only go one and you also have a reduced stealth by six seconds so you're going to have a restealth of four seconds this is i can't tell you enough how clutch this is there are moments where i will literally gouge or I'm like running sap, I run away, cannibalize, and I'm able to cannibalize and re-stealth in four seconds before the sap is off and the guy like is trying to mount up and like run at me. So having the four second re-stealth is insane. Also, if you miss if you misplay your stealth and it breaks and you're like, oh shit, it's only four seconds. You only gotta live for four more seconds around the pillar and then you can get a restealth. That is way more doable than six, seven, eight seconds. And when you go back into stealth, you're gonna be fast which is really, really good because we're already, we don't have shadow step. We need to be fast. This is great. It allows us to really push for the saps on DKs, push for the saps on paladins. When you're going up against warrior pally, push for saps before people are either pet bugging or getting into a position that you don't want them to be in. And it's great for BGs. It's great for world PVP all around. You feel really fluid having a very fast stealth just feels great. It feels great to get away from warrior shouts all these things are really good, especially on top of the MS issue that we have when rogues vanish or in stealth. If you run into a straight line, it's like a 500 MS uh, latency delay. That's why you guys are always getting caught out. Shout out to Naj. He did a whole video on it. This also helps you just you know, get a little damn further away so you might not be getting knocked out. And it's great for jumping over things. For example, if you want to sprint jump into a consecration, sprint jump into a flare, this this ability will allow you to pull those plays off where you want to sprint jump in and get the one ability off to set up a play. So for me on the double DPS, I actually go, I want to go toe to toe for the opener. I go full master of deception because I want the best stealth. I, I tried without the master of deception and i kept on getting sapped there were ways to play around it with using fan and knives when i when i when my partner gets resapped um i would use that with the vanish however i really think it's important to just be able to go toe to toe because there are times for a second reset i wouldn't be able to you know i wouldn't be able to fan and knives out and essentially they have to just reopen so master deception max stealth max speed stealth is really really good and again it's something that you can toy with uh depending on what comp you are playing um 
for double DPS, I think this is a very powerful spec to go because it allows you to have that full stealth advantage and not have any sort of weak, spo weak points in your opener or whenever you're trying to do anything involving stealth. Because in stealth right now, as Mutilate, it's a big moment for us. We have to have it go right. And if it doesn't go right, it can quickly go wrong. And uh, having these things there helps it reduce the chances of it going wrong. Next is Dirty Tricks. Increases the range of your blind and sap ability by 5 yards and reduces the energy cost of your blind and sap by 50%. This is a must must have especially when you want to do sap opens like quick sap goes uh very very important to have because you want to make sure that hey i want to sap out the first seduce or i want to sap out of a clone or something like that you want to make sure that the sap goes off and you're not starved and you can go back on the target and pump out damage next we have saint i'm just gonna skip this this is really just useless um i mean i guess you could say it would be good for healer dps because it reduces the critical hit chance um by range but i again guys really just not worth it at all next is elusiveness and you're like wow showbeck elusiveness reduces the cooldown of your vanish and blind ability by 30 seconds and your cloak of shadows by 15 you could put two points in it minus 30 seconds on cloak showbeck what are you doing i'm playing double dps the game is over bro the game is over before i even need this this is amazing must have the games are a little bit longer this is really really must have in threes must must have in bgs and any sort of like natural organic play um but for me lock rogue and mage rogue the games are ending very very quickly and i'm only gonna get one cloak and the only time i'm ever really burned by this is if my partner dies and i have to 1v1 and the cloak is not going to be up when it could be up and i could win now however you could also argue then don't open and just play the sap wait for i try and greed the sap on i and like bait that and then you'll be able to buy enough time if you just play really really well to live a little longer to have the cloak of shadows uh back up but again lock rogue there th this thing is useless we do not need it ghostly strike is the next thing i don't think this is a good talent to take because we're constantly using mutilate is it great against warrior pally to have this extra dodge or any sort of you know if you're healer dps going up against another healer dps any sort of longer game yes it could be well but i'd rather spend the 40 energy uh or wait the extra two seconds for the 60 to do a mutilate than to use a ghosty strike just for the dodge chance um i think it's really going to start hurting your damage however if it is if it is in your liking i say hey go for it play play it I personally have not tested this out because I don't think it is worth using the 40 energy for the 15%, especially as double DPS. But depending on what your comp is, hey, maybe Feral Rogue, it might be really dope because you guys are just kind of all in, all out in the open. But for more of like a setup based comp, I do not think this is good at all because you're constantly trying to set up and like play around a trinket to get a clean kill, not kind of over uh, overstay your welcome being out tanking in damage but dpr or healer dps this might be something that could very be well beneficial to you with using and adding to your toolkit next we have serrated blades this adds uh your attacks to ignore up to nine percent of your target's armor and increases the damage dealt by your rupture uh this is a really good talent that i like to go because it allows me to do more damage and allows my rupture to also do more damage next up we have setup so set up, you gain a uh, hundred percent chance to add a combo point to your target after dodging their attack or fully resisting one of their spells. This is amazing for healer DPS because the games are longer, more abilities, more dodges, more combo points, more damage, right? And then you have initiative, which is more of a double DPS build where you want your cheap shots to always give the combo points, allowing you to get the five combo because sometimes even when you do go set up and you are doing healer DPS, you can go for a vanish mutilate. And if your mutilate doesn't crit, you're going to be down one combo point. Now you can do a shiv to cover. So the opener would be cheap shot, mutilate, shiv, kidney. However, you're going to be losing that damage in the kidney shot. And if you're going the talent point for improved kidney, you're kind of a little scuffing yourself. And so it, it kind of like cascades a little bit, but that's only on the chances that you do not crit. But again, set up more dodges, more resists, more combo points, more crits more damage right 
Try to make a rhyme. Didn't really work out the second time. Oh, shit. Uh, so yeah, initiative is really, really good for the double DPS because you're gonna have the five comma point locked in, no questions asked. And you're gonna be able to connect that kidney and just maximize your damage and not worry about like, oh, for example, if it's a orc or a paladin and they have the reduced stun duration, you actually can't even cheap mutilate shiv kidney there's gonna be a gap so you kind of just got to stomach the four combo point with the setup if you go this uh go with setup uh, you're gonna have to sometimes stomach the four combo point kidney instead of five so that's why i like initiative and honest to god if i played healer dps i probably would still go initiative but that's my own personal preference because there were times where i did lose a game where i needed to swap kill on a rogue and i didn't get the crit and there was four and um it was an orc and i got bit by it and i was like hey yo so, but again, very, very um, personal preference. Definitely, definitely personal preference on these two guys. There's not one that is better for sure. So play around with what you like uh, and especially with what comp you are as well. Next, we have heightened senses and heightened senses is going to increase your stealth detection and reduce the energies uh, or reduce the chance you are hit by spells and range attacks by 4%. This is amazing because like I said, this whole build is I want to be able to go toe to toe with anyone. I want to go to toe to toe with any subtlety rogue any feral i don't want to get opened on i want it to be truly rng where if the rogue saps me i i know that it's an equal playing field and it's it's just because he was behind me or something like that so i go heightened senses and it's also nice to have the miss from ranges it does happen a lot so i definitely think this is great uh, and this is a definite optional talent depending on what comp you're playing uh definitely definitely an optional talent next is preparation we don't even need to talk about it M absolute must have and then Dirty Deeds, I also think we don't even need to talk about it, is an absolute must-have because it cheap shot Garrotts. And additionally, your special abilities cause 20% more damage below 35. You have to, have to, have to have it. Um, and then you're going to be left over with one more point. You can kind of place it anywhere um, down here. And then I ended up putting it in Master Salty for the increased 4% for that first mutilate after I open in stealth. I'm going to have a 4% increased damage of that. Um, so... That is going to be it for the talents um, and what you can really pick. You can also put it into the 2% deadly uh, around the AP that you're going to have when you are in the upper epsilon of gear. It's going to equate to around 60 to 70 attack power for just that 2%. So gauge on what you want to put. You can definitely put it in a 10% on your offhand. You can definitely put it in another lethality or poison, um, or you can even put it into 2%, re you know, damage reduction, depending on what you want. But guys, that is going to be it for the deep dive spec. All right. You now understand mutilate. You now understand the value and the depth of each of those talent points and what they actually mean inside a game to you. So now you can go create the best mutilate spec for your play style. So you can go out there and have as much fun and climb up the rating as you can. All right. So it's your boy Shobek. And until next time, boys, I'm live on Twitch every single day. Welcome to the Mute Club. Come and join us. And until next time, much love, boys. All right. Peace out. Be easy. Later.